Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am the Omni Viewer, and much to my surprise, Primal is back. Kind of. Apparently on April 1st, Adult Swim aired an episode from the second half of the series, though it's difficult to say when in that second half it takes place. I guess they just aired it partly as a surprise and partly... I don't know why they chose to air that particular one, but they aired it. It's an episode called Plague of Madness. Quite possibly one of the most disturbing pieces of animation ever shown on TV. So first things first, thank God Fang is okay. Um, that much is spoiled. I mean, it would be hard to imagine the series without Fang, but still, I mean, the way the Rage of the Ape Men episode aired, I mean, that hit me. So, knowing she's alright is good, but I don't necessarily think that Plague of Madness is the very next episode in that continuity. You can't just end one episode with a major character nearly dead and then go right into the next episode with that same character alive and healthy as if nothing had happened. So, I'm pretty sure this isn't the chronologically next episode. And of course, this doesn't mean the series is going to suddenly start up again. This was just a little taste of what's to come. The rest of the series is going to air in the fall. They just decided to show this part early. So, technically I'm reviewing this episode out of order, but I'll certainly revisit it when the series picks up again and I have another context for it, and who knows, my perspective may have changed by then. But for now, here are my thoughts on Plague of Magnus. Um, well, it's not for the weak of stomach, that much is for certain. This is basically their zombie episode. It's horror-themed, sort of in the same vein as the Blood Moon episode, but very different. Basically, we start off with a very peaceful scene of a bunch of Camarasauruses, according to most online sources. They're sauropods, they look kind of like Brachiosaurus, and Lord knows they're big enough, but officially I think they're identified as Camarasauruses. We just see them in a nice little valley, a la Land Before Time, Great Valley setting. Very peaceful, there's nesting, there's grazing on trees, it's all very nice. But as we know, when something looks very nice in Gendy Tartakovsky's Primal, the other shoe is going to drop at some point. And that comes when a zombified Parasaurolophus enters the field and bites a random sauropod. And apparently that was all the zombified creature had within it, but the Camarasaurus is now infected and it slaughters every other member of its herd, crushes the nests, and that's all before Fang and Spear even show up. And when they do, well, then the chase is on because whatever this virus does to you, part of it apparently is just that desire to spread. It's a very interestingly timed episode, that much is for certain, given world events. But uh, we shouldn't have to look at this episode in the context of what's going on right now, though I have to say, it certainly is timely, capturing the fear people have of becoming infected by something they don't understand. But, either way, I'm going to try to look at this episode just as an episode. What separates this from the Blood Moon episode is that while it is still a chase, it's a far more harrowing chase. When it comes to facing off the bats and the spider in Blood Moon, Fang and Spear at least had a fighting chance against them. Uh, it was not easy, of course. The spider was huge, the bats could fly, but still, Spear and Fang could technically fight back. But this... This is an opponent against which there is no fighting back. It's a Camarasaurus, for starters, a, a huge sauropod, dwarfs both of them, it would be enough of a threat if they ticked it off just on that aspect. It would stomp them flat. But the added danger here is that there's a disease involved. And there is a very real risk that even if they were somehow able to fight back, they could still get infected. 
So basically, the only option they have is social distancing. It's, uh, yeah, it's proving difficult to not talk about this in context, isn't it? But that's essentially the main crux of the episode. It is to get away from this danger which they know they can't fight. And, yeah, it's a harrowing one. Horrifying, really. Especially the way this virus is portrayed as affecting the sauropod. Because, I, I'm gonna level with you guys here. I don't like zombies. Uh, not because I'm scared of them, but because I think they are kinda lazy. Like, they, they are the easiest possible monsters you can come up with for an opponent. Because they don't really have personalities, they are very basic in what they can do, that makes them easy to write, easy for actors to portray because it doesn't really need much in the way of acting ability, easy for video game programmers to program because you can just multiply the same basic walk forward and eat thing. I don't think they're very original monsters. They're maybe not as overdone as vampires, but vampires you can at least speak to. Vampires at least have personalities. Zombies don't really have that. They just shamble around and look gross. But this particular zombie, the sauropod zombie, it is the most effective zombie I've seen in fiction in a very, very long time. Because it's not just a shambling corpse that wants to bite you. It actually looks like it is in pain the whole time. Like, when we first see it... When we first see the sauropod get bitten, and we slowly see that transformation from a healthy, peaceful creature to a rotting, rage-fueled corpse. It is a slow and terrible looking process as we see this thing slowly, well, kind of slowly, but at the same time frighteningly rapid in some ways, as we see it transform into that creature. And it never loses that sense that it is not a good state of being. It moves forward because it has all of this pain and all of this rage at all of this it has no outlet for anything it has now other than to lash out at whatever is around it and again that fits into the idea that primal has had from the beginning that there isn't really any moral good or evil in this world at least in the world of primal there's just that fight for survival. But here's a creature that has arguably lost the fight for survival, but it's still around, and it's trying to spread its lack of survival, which is horrifying in its own right. And the, every move that it makes, every sound that comes out of it, is horrifying. Just genuinely this is an effective zombie creature anyone who wants to do a zombie in the future needs to look at this episode for inspiration because you don't just want something that shambles for going uh, with dead eyes and barely any movement you want something like this sauropod not actually a sauropod of course i mean zombie dinosaurs can be a thing but any zombie you want to do, look at this episode and take notes. Now, of course, the focus is predominantly on this creature, which means Spear and Fang just happen to pass through and spend most of the episode on the run. They don't really have that much to do beyond it, but then again, that doesn't mean they have nothing to do. Spear, in particular, has a nightmare sequence of him and Fang both getting infected. And, I mean, that's just as horrifying as any other part of the episode. And he understands, of course, the real danger behind it. Spe uh, Fang recognizes it, too. She clearly knows something's wrong. But being a T-Rex and not having the same kind of intellect as Spear 
we don't get the sense that she fully grasps it. She only knows that something's very wrong. Spear knows and comprehends the danger, which again reminds us that they are ultimately very different characters, but when put in the same boat, they will work together. And we see again how they work together to get away, how they play off each other when they're trying to sneak away, when they think they've got a chance. And then of course we have the ending where the zombie sauropod ultimately does die. And it's treated as tragic, because again, this creature wasn't really evil, it was a victim. It didn't ask to be infected, it couldn't help that it was infected, or what it was doing while it was infected. And it kinda had to be done, because clearly there was just no other way to deal with this thing. Yet at the same time, seeing it go, you do kinda feel bad for it. It's sort of hearkening back to the Universal Monsters, where you had these creatures that, yes, they were dangerous, and yes, they caused harm, but at the same time, you were always sad to see them go. You were always sad when they perished in the flames. You always would wonder if there was perhaps another way, even if, you know, deep down, there really wasn't one. So really disturbing visual episode, but also a really moving one. And when I see it again in context of the rest of the series, and as in the other episodes that are supposed to air around it, maybe I'll have some new thoughts to share. But for now, those are my thoughts on Plague of Madness. Very disturbing, but being that this is primal, very well done. Now I'm really looking forward to fall and seeing what else this show has to offer. Hopefully it doesn't churn the stomach as much this time. Until such time as we meet again, this is the Omni Viewer signing off. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like it as well as subscribe to the channel for more content of a similar nature. Also, check the description for links to our Twitter, DeviantArt, and Patreon pages, as well as the Amazon link for the novel Operation Red Dragon The Daikaiju Wars Part 1, penned by yours truly. Thank you all, and we appreciate your support.